This video is sponsored by Squarespace. It's the end of 2022, so where I'm gonna be going over my favorite products that I had the opportunity to review this year. Something that separates this year from many of the years previous is there's nothing bad. Every year it seems like I'd review a couple laptops that were just not powerful enough, or I'd review some stuff that had a really yucky pen. I didn't really run into any of that this year. So I had to rank these products by thinking about things like the value or the overall quality or features that they're providing. And figuring out that order has been really hard, but I think I got it. So let's start with number 13. This is the Huion Inspiroi Giano. This is a traditional drawing tablet that you plug in via the USB-C port to your Mac or your PC. There's no screen here, so as you draw on the tablet, you're gonna see on your laptop screen or your computer monitor the line that you're drawing as you draw it. And overall, the line quality here is really good. The claim to fame, the thing that really separates this from many of the other products that I've reviewed out there, is the word Giano, which implies giant. This is a very very big drawing tablet. Now this is number 13 on the list because I don't think it's that remarkable. It's a pretty expensive product considering, you know, some of the other tablets that Huion has out there. But if you're looking for a really big drawing tablet, I don't know how many people are, but if you are, this one's one of the better ones out there. It competes directly against Wacom's largest Intuos tablet. And I think it's almost as good. It's gonna get you like 90, 95% of the way there for a fraction of the cost. So it's a good product. Number 12 is the XP Pen Deco LW. Now this is another one of those drawing tablets that's very similar to the Giano that I was just talking about a minute ago. It is much, much smaller and it's made by XP Pen. And what I like about it is one, it comes in a lot of different colors, which kind of spices it up a little bit. It's been my go-to drawing tablet when I need to draw on something really quickly and I can just plug it in, take it with me. It's very portable. It is also wireless. It's a nice little Bluetooth tablet. So that that's another added feature. And the battery that's inside of it lasts a really long time. Now compared to the Huion, I think I get a little bit more wavy lines in general with XP Pen products. That was the case here as well too, but I didn't think it was horrible. And so yeah, the, the Deco LW, again, another one of those solid products. It's at the bottom of my list, but it's not bad. Number 11, this is, this is gonna be an interesting one. This is the 10th generation iPad. Now this was one of the big redesigns of the year. One of the things that a lot of people were excited for. There were a lot of rumors over the summer that Apple was working on a brand new entry level iPad. And sure enough, all of those rumors were true. Well, most of the rumors were true. You see, this iPad looks more like the iPad Air. They got rid of the face button that the old iPads had. They shrunk down the bezels, they squared off the sides, they replaced the lightning port with a USB-C port. So everybody thought this meant that it was also going to support the Apple Pencil 2, which magnetically charges along the side of like the iPad Airs and the iPad Pros. It does not support that. It still supports the old Apple Pencil. Not only that, but Apple has raised the price to $450. One of the big benefits of that entry-level iPad, the ninth gen iPad, which you can still get, it is still a really good value, is the fact that it's only $330, extra $100 once you add the pencil. But that $430 is a phenomenal value for what you're getting. I felt like this time around, it, it raised the price, it got it closer to the Air, but it's not adding any of the benefits and, and features that you get from the iPad Air. For example, you don't have the laminated screen that you get in the Air. You don't have the Apple Pencil too. They did move the camera around, so if you're not really using this for drawing necessarily, uh, and you want it more for video calls, it's a great iPad for that. Number 10 is the Galaxy Book 2 Pro 360, I think I, I got that name right. This is a nice little laptop. And, and again, this is one of those products where there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, the reason it's so low on this list is that it's almost identical to last year's Galaxy Book 360 laptop. Nothing new here. Well, I think they updated the internals a little bit, but you, it still comes with the uh, S Pen, which is the Wacom powered pen. Works really well here. It's not a super powerful Windows machine. So now we're getting into that area where I have to nitpick a little bit. If you want an inexpensive, you know, 360 degree laptop that you can draw on, I actually think this is a very, very good choice. But like I said at the beginning, nothing wrong with any of these products. It's just, I just had to put it somewhere and, and this is where it went. Number nine, the Wacom Cintiq Pro 27. This is where the list gets super hard. This is one of those that could have been like number one or two on the list. It's an amazing product. First of all, 
Wacom released their like really amazing tablet. This thing is 4K. They really improved the touch. You've got a 27 inch screen, smaller bezels. Also, you don't have the remote control with the shortcuts on it anymore. Instead, they've like added these nice, comfortable handles along the sides and the backs that have the shortcut keys on those. It's really cool. And it is one of the best drawing experiences you're gonna have on a Windows or a Mac PC or anything anywhere. It is phenomenal. Even the changes that they made to the Pro Pen 2 with being able to adjust the weight to make it heavier or make it lighter, or you can screw on a, like a, a larger grip if you want it. All of those little usability things that they thought through with this tablet are really, really nice. At the end of the day, what really puts this lower on this list is the price. It is incredibly expensive. We're talking about $3,500 just to get this thing. It wasn't strange at all coming from Wacom to see that price, but for me, that's where it comes in. There's gonna be a lot of pros that are gonna love this thing and enjoy it for a very long time. It's a phenomenal product, but because of that price, I don't really see the value there, which lowered it on this list. Next up is the XP Pen Artist 16. I don't really have a lot to say about this product. It is very, very, very similar to what they released last year, about a year and a half ago, maybe. It, it's it's a solid product. The reason that it's here is I think it's a tremendous value. Uh, it, it is a lower price, 16 inch pen display, higher quality. Pen isn't as good as Wacom, maybe not quite as good as Huion, but good enough for most illustrators. Number seven is the XP Pen Artist 10, and th this falls into the same category. It is a little higher, and what XP Pen is doing here is they're trying to release the cheapest pen display that they possibly can. I think this run is retailing for $170, maybe $180, making it the cheapest screen that you can draw on. It's the same exact drawing experience as the 16. It's the same drawing experience you're gonna find on all of XP Pen's tablets but that price is really good. And uh, I think if you're just getting into illustration and you want to draw on a screen, this isn't a bad place to start. The one thing that you should be aware of, however, is that when you get that small, when you plug it into a Windows computer, once you see the Windows interface, if you're using an application like Clip Studio or Krita, what you're gonna see are really hard to hit, uh, you know, touch points. Because that screen is so small, the interface elements are a little bit smaller. Number six is the M2 iPad Pro. When I review a product, I don't like to watch other people's reviews beforehand. I like to just kind of have my own, you know, unfiltered idea of what a product is like. And I thought this was a phenomenal iPad. I still feel like it's a phenomenal iPad. I really love the thing. And when I started watching other people's reviews, they really, a lot of them, not everybody, really slammed this thing. I think what it comes down to is as an illustrator, my primary tool, my daily driver, if you will, is a slightly older, like 2018 iPad Pro. It's very similar to this iPad. Very, very similar. In fact, the features I want are all in that older iPad, which is why I'm still using that one. They did add one key feature that I think is fantastic for illustrators, and that is this hover feature that they've added to the Apple Pencil 2. This is something that requires some kind of feature that's in the M2 chip in order to operate properly. Kind of a bummer. I was hoping that maybe this was a feature they could roll out to at least last year's iPads, but it's nice to finally see that feature by default here here on an iPad, something we've had on Wacom tablets for years. So I think this is a much bigger update for artists than it is for other people in the tech community. And I, I think there's some interesting things going on with the iPad. I'm going to be doing an updated review to this iPad probably early next year. I didn't get to cover a lot of the features because they hadn't rolled out yet, like the dual screen features that they're adding. The hover feature was only implemented in a few apps. I didn't get to use it in Procreate. They're working on a really big update there. So there's just still a lot I wanna test there, and I'm gonna be doing that in the future. But overall, it's a good product. Now, before we get to the next one, I do wanna shout out to today's sponsor, Squarespace. You probably already know that Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for building the ultimate website for your brand or business. But it's also one of the best ways to engage with your audience. Squarespace has member areas. This makes it easy for creators to monetize their content and expertise in a way that fits their brand. With member areas, you can unlock a new revenue stream for your business and free up time in your schedule by selling access to things like gated content, videos, online courses, or even newsletters. And you can customize all of this to fit your brand with Squarespace's best 
in-class website templates. Browse the category of your business to find the perfect starting place and see how well your business is performing with Squarespace's analytics. Learn where your site visits and sales are coming from and analyze which channels are the most effective. Improve your website and build a marketing strategy based on top keywords and the most popular products and content. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial. When you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Brad Colbo to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain. Number five is the Surface Pro 9. I wasn't sure if I should put this above the iPad or not, but but why not? The, last year, the Surface Pen, the Surface Slim Pen, redesigned, and it is a far better pen. The reason I put it ahead of the iPad Pro, uh, this year anyway, isn't because I like drawing on Windows or a Surface better. Uh, I think the Apple Pencil still is a little bit better, but because I think it's one of the best Windows laptops that you can draw on. If you need a full-blown operating system, this is a very good way to go. It's not super powered, right? You're not gonna wanna do 3D work on this thing or anything like that, but for drawing and illustration and working in Photoshop or Adobe Fresco, you know, Krita, it's gonna work great. The pen is so much better than it used to be. Overall, I think it's a really solid product, even though if you compare this to say the Surface Pro 8 that came out last year, there's not a huge difference. In fact, if you're looking at a product like this, I might say, hey, that Surface Pro 8, if you could get it at a discount, might be a better value. But overall, it's a very good product. Number four, the Galaxy Tab S6 Lite. Is this the fourth best product on this list? No, it is not. Why is it number four? Because of the price. So I've been saying for years, the Samsung Galaxy Tab S6 Lite has been, I think, the best bang for your buck product out there. It retails for what? $350, $400, kind of depending on the configuration you get. But I've seen it on sale recently for as low as like $230. So what Samsung did this year was that they updated the processor in that S6 Lite and re-released it as a 2022 version. The biggest problem with that old version, even though it was a tremendous value, was that you're getting a tablet that's probably going to slow down in the next few years. Now they've added some life to that. So if you get the 2022 version, which I've seen on sale for like $230, an amazing value. I'll, I'll link some of those down below. I don't know how live, long those sales will be live. You're going to get a good two or three years out of this before it really starts to slow down. That's not a lot. But when you buy a budget priced Android tablet like this, I mean, that's just kind of what you have to expect, but it comes with the S Pen, you know, the iPad, the entry level iPad, that's $100 extra. So I just think, you know, value what you're getting for what you're paying. This is one of the best products out there. Next up is the Huion Canvas Pro 13 2.5K. One of the things I like that Huion is doing is that they're starting to add some premium features into their products without adding a ton of price. Now, this is going to cost more than their other 13 inch tablet. But what I like about it is they haven't gone all the way up to 4K. They've, they've increased increase the resolution so it looks so much crisper uh, and it just it's just a nicer nicer display because of that but they've decided not to go full 4k and break the bank on it and i think you have the quality of huion's pen you know mixed with that nice price with some premium features they're starting to sprinkle in i think the value is there just like the tab s6 Lite, i don't think this is the best product on this list but i think it's a tremendous value for what you're paying for it number two i got an ipad on here look at this the ipad air now this is another one of those products that when i watched other people's reviews they were like ho-hum it's just like last year's ipad except they made it a little bit better and yeah that's right in fact this year they added the m1 chip many of the features in ipad os 16 and beyond are going to require that extra ram that the m1 chip has uh, a lot of people like uh, uh, some app makers are making more powerful pro level apps some of those aren't out yet, like we've seen DaVinci Resolve is coming out. Uh, we're probably going to start seeing some better, more pro featured apps coming out in the future. They're going to require that extra RAM and the extra oomph that you get from that M1 chip. So I think it's really cool that we see that in the iPad Air at a really good price. In fact, people who are looking at, say, the 11 inch iPad Pro versus the iPad Air, I think right now, the value might be in the air, even though that Pro has the M2 chip. You are gonna get better performance, which means that is going to last you more years if you go with the Pro. Uh, you're gonna get a better screen there, better refresh rate there. However, 
what I really want in an iPad when I'm using it is I want more storage. If I get the Air and add more storage, that's kind of on par with buying a lower storage configured iPad Pro. I get my Apple Pencil 2, I get my storage. Those are the things I need iPad Air gives me that at a good price, and that's why it made it here on this list. And number one was the Samsung Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra. Uh, what happens on a lot of these lists is I find the thing that I just really love. It's hard to put into words why this is here. It is not the best value. I still prefer drawing on an iPad, but I love this thing. This list is just a list of things that I really like. And for whatever reason, this one's on it. I actually I know the reason. The, the screen for a, an Android tablet, it's huge. It feels so luxurious to have an Android tablet at this size. It looks a little bit goofy because you have like the little notch cut out of the top for the camera, but I didn't really mind. After a while, it never really got in the way of any of the interface elements and I it kind of faded into the background after a while. And pulling up Krita or Clip Studio Paint, it was just luxurious to have so much green real estate to paint in. It wasn't super heavy. You know, I wouldn't say this is for everyone. If you're gonna use your iPad or your Android tablet, like to watch movies and play games and do all this fun stuff and draw, it's not great for reading, you know? Um, it's not great for holding up and watching video on it for long periods of time, but it's great for drawing. And that's what this is about. And I think what I love the most about it is the fact that Samsung's just going for it. They're just saying, hey, let's, let's put out this giant screen thing, whether people want it or not. I love that. I, I love to see them pushing the envelope. Apple has been putting out pretty much the same iPad for years. It's a great product. There's nothing wrong with that iPad. It's fine, but there's nothing experimental going on here. I love to see that Samsung's, you know, pushing that envelope. And because of that, this was just one of those products that I tried to use as much as possible. Yeah, so so that is my list. Down below, I'm gonna link all these products so if you wanna find any of them, they're down there. Those are affiliate links. Uh, that is one of the ways I support this channel. Uh, anyway, what did I miss? You know, what things were on your list that, this year that you loved? What do you think I ranked wrong? That's the big question. Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you all for watching, and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.